Good yields are always a joy for every hard-working farmer. Good crop yields need favorable conditions such as well-distributed rainfall, sufficient sunlight, good agricultural management, and a healthy environment. In Ghana, a large percentage of the farming population is directly dependent on rain-fed agriculture for their livelihoods. However, logging, charcoal burning, the slash and burn form of land preparation for cropping have all led to severe degradation of the environment. As a result, Ghana is currently experiencing increased temperatures, rainfall variability and droughts. These conditions threaten water availability and food security. The situation of farmers in communities along the Dany River Basin is no exception. In fact, scientific information indicates that the average annual rainfall in these communities decreased from 1,700 mm per year in 1975 to 1,400 mm per year as at present. Precipitation is likely to decrease even further, with temperatures expected to rise by 2.5 degrees Celsius over the next 40 years. This decrease in the amount and distribution of rainfall has had a considerable impact on the traditional rain-fed agriculture and crop yields in the area. This farmer shares his experiences. We have been getting food crops in abundance up to a certain stage here about uh, five or six years now the yielding it has been diminishing going down traditionally farmers plant more than one crop on the same field this serves as a buffer against unforeseen weather conditions should one of the crops fail as a result of bad weather over the years, due to erratic rainfall patterns coupled with severe crop failures, some farmers living along permanent water sources like the Danyu River have tried to locate their farms along the river basins to take advantage of the slightly wet soils for a better crop performance. Again, all the crops are suffering from the harsh weather conditions. I found out why he did not irrigate the crops. People <laughs> Fortunately, the Development Institute, a non-governmental organization focusing on people's empowerment and sustainable development in Ghana, went to the aid of these farmers in the Waje community under a small grants package. Ken Kine is the executive director of the Development Institute. The Development Institute has already been working in the Waje community. And so when we uh, started our relationship with uh, ADAPT's project, we went back to the community to let them understand the ADAPT's process. The ADAPT's process includes uh, knowledge generation, which includes scientific and then indigenous knowledge gathering. And then that uh, was followed by dialogue in the community to let them understand climate change issues and their vulnerability. ADAPTS is an initiative of the Institute for Environmental Studies, IVM, and Acacia Water, whose role specifically is to support the assessment of the climate and also the hydrological impacts of activities and measures which had already been designed by local communities. Both ends, the other partner in ADAPTS, supports the empowerment and dialogue activities. ADAPTS has put together 
simple strategies that enable developing countries to effectively respond to consequences of climate change in the water sector. With the coming in of adults, the success story from Waje has been replicated in other communities along the Dany River. Many more farmers are now seriously cropping under irrigation using water from the Dany River. Fortunately, the Dany River has enough water all year round, and with the aid of this big sprinkler irrigation pump, the farmers are able to pump enough water from the river for a good crop performance. The study has also shown that there will be water available for surface irrigation, so which also makes it sustainable. To protect the Danya River, at least around the areas being cultivated in the various localities for a more sustainable production, four zones were created from the riverbed upwards. A buffer zone measuring 30 to 50 meters from the riverbank was created. This zone is a no cultivation area, but was created to help prevent erosion of the banks of the river. A minimal activity of enrichment planting of water-loving plants indigenous to the area was, however, carried out. An agroforestry zone was planted with the mixture of timber and non-timber species suitable to the area and selected by the farmers. These trees were carefully chosen to provide additional income in future and also protect the environment from further degradation. The cultivation zone was demarcated purposely for vegetable and other high-value crops meant to give these farmers good income. Mie dena gbla mi yona chi kona de nuoji ikebe pere kamele mi cho unku zire kacha vifia mi cho ne pere kamazi eto alozi eve na be mi kona ga akopo de vioji le school adapts has helped communities to transit from rain-fed agriculture to irrigated agriculture. Adapts have also ensured that the communities now own uh, irrigation, a, a small-scale irrigation equipment, which is sustainable and they can continue to use it. Farmers are now better, especially all the farmer groups, including women, that are part of this particular project. Now they can crop twice in a year and their incomes have quadruple because what they normally have initially is just about 500 euro but now they can make 4000 uh, between 2 to 4000 euro a year so that is a huge improvement the adults model apart from aiding the vulnerable groups in the society to build resilience against the effects of climate change also engages in policy dialogues on climate proof water management for even the entire country Policy dialogues were then set up with the Water Resources Commission, the main governmental agency responsible for water resources in Ghana. They were involved in the program from the start. We have been uh, implementing a project called ADAPS together with the Development Institute uh, in the Dai Basin, developing integrated water resource management plan for the Dai Basin, of course incorporating climate change. In fact, it was the first time that WRC had to work with civil society in the development of a river basin plan. And uh, this has been embraced at the, at the national level. So we have actually upscaled this concept into the national IWM planning system. Three years on, the communities living along the Dying River Basin, the Development Institute, the Water Resources Commission and all stakeholders of the ADAPT Consortium have reason to celebrate their achievements. The Waji model is one of the four cases. Countries such as Vietnam, Peru and Ethiopia have applied the same ADAPT approach within their own context. 